What are you willing to give up to get ultimate power? I love this when it comes to magic systems because I love consequences in anything because when you're super all powerful, it tends to be boring. If you don't give something up, there isn't really a conflict because you can just wave your fingers and fix everything and there necessarily is not any conflict or strife within what you're doing. This is why I love magic systems that actually have a consequence because when it comes down to it, it adds a conflict that pretty much is a part of the rules and can you figure out ways to overcome this or is this drawback going to be your demise? I think a good example of this is the book that I just finished, which is The Kingdom of Liars, written by Nick Martell. This is his debut novel, and I have a lot to say about it, so why don't we get into it before I forget what I was saying? Oh no. So this book came to my attention because Nick Bartell, the author, actually was on Brandon Sanderson's live stream, kind of pitching the book and talking about what it was to be an author. And kind of his pitch interested me because it was something that's unlike a lot of things that I've been reading. So I picked it up and I read it. Now I'm talking to you all. So why don't I kind of get into the plot of the story? We follow Michael Kingman, who's pretty much a disgraced... Well, his family's more like the sins of the father are passed down to the sins of the family this time because he is a Kingman a disgraced family within this hollow court, which is a pretty much royal system where his father killed the child emperor and he's trying to clear his father's name. But at the exact same time in this world, there is this beautiful magic system where you can be all powerful, but every time you use magic, you have to give up some memories. It could be your first kiss, your first date, an embarrassing moment when you forgot that you were on a hot mic and you accidentally said something like booger. Oh God, can I forget that? Ugh. But I think this is cool because this entire story is more of a political intrigue book. It's less about magic, but more of clearing the name, navigating within this court system, and what is a legacy. Now, I really love this book. I'll start off with what I really enjoyed. For me, I think what makes this book really good and such a strong debut novel is that everything about this book just feels different in the sense of that it isn't a chosen one story. It isn't like we are following a super powerful wizard. It's a story about what is a legacy. And I find that to be a fun because when it comes down to it, you really think about what is memory, I guess. That's kind of like the core thing of this magic too, is a legacy is pretty much like a permanent memory for people to talk about that pass on. Much like how tradition is ghost peer pressure, a legacy is a memory of something great or disastrous that moves on from one generation to the next. And I think Nick does a really good job kind of showing this quite a bit. The other thing that I thought was so much fun is this magic system. For me, what makes a good magic system is the consequences. And I can only imagine when it comes to this, I, haven't, I can't believe this hasn't been thought of before. You have to give up memories to use magic. And it isn't necessarily like, oh, when you think of like, oh, you, you know, you lose little things. No, it actually goes into kind of when it comes to this book, what is a memory? Can you remember something that, you know, a couple days ago, or is it going to be something like the combination to like a safe, or maybe even forgetting how to walk or even breathing could be things that you could forget. There's a danger to using this magic. That's what I like about the story. The other thing that I thought was fun was kind of the world building. It isn't as super detailed as other world building, but it does have a unique setting where the moon has been destroyed and bits and pieces of it fall down on the city. I was waiting for like the day after tomorrow or Armageddon or Deep Impact. I guess well, both those movies came out around the same time. But all that stuff kind of takes a backseat just a little bit within the story. Now, I do kind of have some problems with the story. I think this has to do with more of it being like a debut novel and kind of falls into certain trappings where the first thing that I noticed is this book, if you're even slightly paying attention, the you know, the twists and turns are not interesting. Like you can actually pick and choose, like, oh, I know exactly what's gonna happen, and then 20, 40, 80, 100 pages from now, it pays off. There's a lot of setup and payoff that's really obvious. It's not necessarily like Chekhov's gun, but if you're paying attention to, you know, oh, this character is so-and-so and they describe them, and then someone makes like a really weird offhand comment, like, oh, they're the same character. Well, that's what's happening. And it isn't like it's blatant and it's bad, but it's more like it's very noticeable. Maybe just someone that hasn't read a lot of fantasy, it isn't. But it's one of these stories where it isn't going to be a super twisty, turny road. It's more of the conflicts that come with kind of that story, which at times can be annoying, but other times it does work. There are some curveballs, I'll admit, but other times I was scratching my head and being like, 
oh, okay. And then it's like, oh, I guess that makes sense because some, some things happen due to consequence or fate or, you know, predetermination while other times, um, you know, the main character has to solve his problems this way, this way, or this way through magic or pretty much a friend of a friend. And it can be boring, but I think the, what makes the charm of this book is kind of the court intrigue and the politics because that works really, really well. Another thing I had a weird time about with the story, I think maybe because I'm not used to reading first person fantasy stories is that this book does take place in a first person setting. And in the beginning, I really did not like it just because I kind of hate first person stuff. But I had to think about it, I had to step back and be like, okay, why is this first person? Oh, duh, because if you're talking about a story where people lose memories for using magic, you can't really do that in a third person setting if you're gonna try to use that in your trickery a little bit. Here, it kind of works, but again, it's like almost like the gimmicky thing. If it wasn't in first person, some things wouldn't come across correctly, while other times you're in Michael's head. And I don't really like Michael as a character that much. Like he isn't likable, he isn't hateable, he's kind of like, just show up at times or he's just there for the sake of being your insert character whereas the people around him are so much cooler like his sister his brother even like his friends are so much cooler he's just there for the sake of being there and at times that's fine but it's like one of those things if you're not used to reading first person narratives or that even in your fantasy you might have a weird time with this kind of for me it was like more of the wording and the prose especially when it comes to it but after like a hundred pages, I got used to it and it wasn't bothersome, but it was just very noticeable. Now, the last thing I had a problem with is when it comes to a book like this, where I actually didn't know that this was a series, I always get confused when it says a novel. Uh, this book ends on a weird cliffhangery note and there is more books in the series once I found out that. But if you're looking for a book that has a strong ending, you might not get it in the story. I feel like you have to pick up the second book that just came out because this is planned to be a, a series. So if you're looking for a book that has a strong finisher where all the loose ends are tied up, you're not necessarily going to get that. You're going to get questions within questions and it's going to be more intriguing. Like, honestly, I'm probably going to pick up more of the books, but also at the exact same time, it was kind of disappointing if I didn't know that, which I didn't know that it wasn't a, you know, I thought this was a one and done type of story it can be really disappointing until I had to find out, oh yeah, of course, uh, there's more to the story than just the book that we have now. It's more of an expanded world. Now, would I recommend this book? Yes, I think this is a really solid debut novel. I think the magic system and how it plays a part in the world is so good. I can't wait to see how he expands it within the other books and just how horrifying the concept is because there are moments where you get deep dives into this magic system and you really think about kind of the cost versus the benefit, which I think is really good. I mean, again, I've been reading The Wheel of Time and that also has a good cost per benefit. But here, I think it makes it like, maybe you don't want to use magic. I think that's kind of the fun thing I kind of like about this is that you actually think about maybe people shouldn't be using their magic because horrific, awful things will happen to them. And I really, really like that about the story. It actually makes you think about this and also how when it comes to this magic, it isn't just, cool wizards and witches and doing things. So I'm like, okay, how would this work within a structured government, but also how would it work within culture and vice versa? And I think that's a very powerful thing. And I gotta say, I really like it. It wasn't just the gimmick of the magic system I really liked. I think the political intrigue and all the conversations and the dialogue, Nick does a really good job with dialogue. I was enthralled and you love certain people, you hate other people, and maybe sometimes things will switch and turn, but by the end of it, you just feel like you've completed something that's a lot of fun. Even though there are kind of, you know, loose ends that don't get put together, it makes me want to continue and keep reading the story. I wish this was a little longer. I mean, I guess for me, it's 600 pages, but it, at times I wish the ending was just a little better, but I'll have to read the other books to make that determination because it just leaves off on a weird note. Otherwise, I still recommend it. Just keep that in mind. Well, what did you all think of the book? I really liked it. I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions, even about the magic system and the cost per benefit. I would really love to hear you all. Well, thank you all so much for watching this video. If you like this video, maybe consider subscribing down below. I would really appreciate that or giving a thumbs up or just commenting about random things. I'd love to engage with you all some more. Well, everyone, thank you all so, so much. And like always, May your food and drink ever be tasteful, and may your books be filled with fantasy and adventure. Bye, everyone. See ya.